I'm about to forge a room pendant. I got a 20 by 5 uh, millimeters iron bar heating up and uh, first heat I'm going to make a set down at 4 centimeters. So instead of uh, measuring with this on the iron bar I used to make a mark here um, on the anvil so it's much easier. So I'm placing the end at my mark and start with half on half off blows. I will almost go through and I start switch to my pin side of my hammer start spreading out what will be the bottom of the pendant. We'll have a uh, kind of a triangular triangular shape so uh, I'm also gonna leave these uh, pin marks on the pendant I think it leaves a nice uh, structure to it the pendant get alive in a in a different way if it than it, if it would be flat. I continue with the shaping a little bit. I'm knocking down the edges. And I take the oh and I take my cutoff tool here and I want to Something like that, and we'll see if these two match up, and uh, pretty good. I will see if I can remove them, remove the corners, and there one goes, and the other one. And the other one, so we got like this. These sides are a bit sharp after the cutoff, so uh, I will do some forging and make it smoother. And now is also the time to adjust if these didn't end up symmetrical. I will do some adjustments. And I think with a little bit more there. too much. Uh, that look good. looks good. And I'm using my guillotine tool to make a hollow for the loop as this is going to be a pendant. I'm about to forge a loop. So continuing on the hollows making it round then I cut it off I used to take it in the same tool it should work and there we go cut it away from the bar and I will spread this out a little bit and then do some final shaping again in the like so. Then we have um, the pendant almost ready. I will do some engravings. I will engrave a algis uh, rune and I will also attach the loop. So I'm gonna engrave or engrave is the it's not the right word. I don't know what this I know what it's called in Sweden, Swedish, but uh, uh, not in English. It's a different techniques. Uh, this is a different technique than engraving. But uh, I think you get the idea. I'm going to stamp, maybe. So I'm making some lines just to guide so I get it in the middle.
like this. We have our room. Now it's time for the loop. I'm gonna use a uh, three millimeter iron wire that is uh, 75 millimeters long. And this is what will become the loop. When I started making these pendants, this is not the first one. And it was many years ago I started to make these. And uh, I have made them the same way. But I remember this loop took me uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, it used to take me like uh, four heats to make, and that's uh, it's nice to see that practice it gets better with practice. Remember where you once were and get a perspective where you are now, uh, which uh, you need that sometimes. I used to attach the loop in the vise, but for now when I'm recording I was thinking I would try to get it done on the anvil. And uh, yeah, it worked out well. In order to get this uh, mood feeling that I want in my videos, I have a setup with lights and uh, I don't get the same moody feeling at the vice so therefore I therefore I thought I would do it here and it worked out uh, even though it, it is easier to do it in the vice I don't know how to say it but it's not that I dislike decorations or I mean I decorate uh, my work all the time but uh, when uh, a de decorative detail can also be practical I feel extra good <laughs> because uh, it, it, it's a little bit hard to just decorate for the decorating uh, purpose. I want uh, details to have something practical, a practical function. And this loop is an example. I mean, I could make a simple practical loop, but instead I make it more decorative like this. So then I get both decorations and uh, functionality. This makes me warm inside. Here we have our finished piece. Algis rune pendant. I did some, I have wire brushed it and uh, did uh, grind the corners here so don't have any sharp edges. Mm. Thank you very much for watching till the end. Your support means a lot.